Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel dedicated to Microsoft Fabric. And this is the special series about data integration, data engineering, and data science within Microsoft Fabric. Today, Misha joins us to discuss another topic related to data science, related to machine learning, that is hyperparameter tuning. Misha, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So how should we start? Maybe just with a question why I need hyperparameter tuning. What is hyperparameter? What are the methods of tuning? Yeah, and so hyperparameter tuning is a, you know, often really complex process. And so typically, you know, in the machine learning workflow, you get your data, you do a lot of work to prepare it, and then you spend a lot of time figuring out what are the right models, what's the right way that I want to train this, you go through an evaluation step. And then you'll finally do like the deployment and the inferencing steps. But often what we see is that a lot of projects fail in this training evaluation process. And a lot of times they fail because you don't know how to best optimize your model to fit your data. And to even give, you know, drill into this a bit further. So, you know, in the machine learning workflow, we see that there's often a lot of different decisions that you have to make to better tune your model performance. The first thing is that you're often selecting a model and you know that in and of itself, there's so many different point frameworks out there, um, but even figuring out which is the best framework is a challenge in and of itself. Um, but even once you've selected a framework, right, you've said, hey, you know, I want to pick a light GBM model. There's often a lot of different hyperparameters to tune and hyperparameters. You can really think of them as the different toggles within a model that help you better fit the model to your data. And so let's take an example. In the first step, one of the first things I have to do when training a model is select the model. And so here's a few different frameworks that are available for, you know, that are most popular within the machine learning workflow. So things like scikit-learn, XGBoost, LightGBM, these are all different model frameworks that you can use um, to start your model training process. But even once you've selected the model, you often have a lot of different hyperparameters that you have to pick from. And so in the case of a LightGBM model, I can be tuning things like the number of estimators, the number of leaves, the learning rate. These are all different settings on the model that you kind of tweak the performance that you might get and better fit it to your data set. So, right, you can think of, do you want your, say, decision tree to be very broad? And do you want a lot of different nodes for things to be classified into? Do you want it to be a bit more succinct, a bit smaller, tighter, maybe less levels, but might be, you know, more broad for some of the other kinds of data that you have. And so often this whole process of figuring out how you set these hyperparameters for the kind of models that you want and the, the, the data that you have, um, this is again where we see a lot of projects fail and things that we want to kind of be able to provide customers, be able to provide data scientists, a tool to be able to help better optimize and make some of these decisions. That makes sense. Last time we recorded a press episode that was about how to make the machine learning. I would love to ask just to bring the clarity how hyperparameter tuning relates to AutoML. Yeah, so great question. AutoML and hyperparameter tuning, they're both capabilities that are available through Flaml, uh, but they both kind of serve different kinds of use cases. And so for hyperparameter tuning, you can really think of this as you already know the model that you want to start with, right? In this case, I might start with the light GBM model. Mm -hmm. I just optimize that specific model for my data. Um, in the case of AutoML, right, you're starting with a data set and you're starting with a task, right? That could be a regression, forecasting, classification task. And you're saying, hey, I just, you know, you tell me what the best model is and you do the tuning for me. And so really they're both two different tools that you have in your kind of data science toolbox, if you will. You can kind of pick which might be best suited for your particular use case and where you're starting from. Got it. So the last time, again, we discussed AutoML, and I asked a question about what's the building block, the heart of AutoML and that flannel, and what's the heart of the methods, the algorithms, the solution that stands behind hyperparameter tuning in Microsoft Fabric Data Science? Yeah, so again, like Flamel is a open source library that we've taken. It came out of MSR and they've done a lot of work to really figure out the different kinds of ways that you can explore and optimize your hyperparameter search spaces. And so some of the things that they've really focused on is how do we come up with a very fast, economical, lightweight approach to searching all of these spaces? Um, and so what we've done is we've actually taken this open source project, Flamel, and both its AutoML and hyperparameter tuning functionalities, and we've deeply integrated it into the Fabric product and the data science experiences. 
And so a few of the things that we've added in and contributed towards is um, automating, you know, taking this framework, deeply integrating it into the runtime. And so as you access any of the runtimes with Spark 3.4 and above, you'll see that this hyperparameter tuning functionality is automatically available. It's available through the Flamel library. And so again, this process really helps automate the process of optimizing your machine learning models. Some of the things that we've added support for is also support to parallelize your hyperparameter trials. And so a lot of times, right, if you're training a bunch of um, single node models, instead of tuning one at a time, some of our thinking was, well, hey, if you have access to a whole Spark cluster, why not use all of the nodes in your Spark cluster to parallelize your training, right? So now you can train and optimize multiple models at the same time. The other things that we've added support for are the ability to easily tune SnapSmell and Spark ML based models. And so a lot of times what you'll find is that sometimes your model is not small enough that it can fit into a single node. And so this is where support for Spark based models is really important in that you can now tune your models, especially when they're at Spark scale. So you don't need to worry about figuring out how you can fit your Spark data frame into Pandas data frame. The new things that we've added into the hyperparameter tuning functionalities in Flamel. It lets you take a Spark data frame and automatically tune that as well. And then the last, we've also added support for integrating this all with MLflow, right? So as you're exploring these different hyperparameters, these different properties of the model, if you will, all of the metrics, all the parameters, these are all automatically going to be captured using MLflow and the hyperparameter tuning capabilities we have. Can you help us to understand what's Synapse ML? Because it's the very first time that viewers of this channel may hear that term. Can you help us to, to see what's this library, what's this tool about? So yeah, let me show you. Synapse ML is a library that is available, it's open source, but it's one of the primary Spark-based machine learning libraries. And so it contains a lot of different capabilities, things around support for cognitive services. And so it provides different interfaces for you to access um, cognitive services to a, you know, what we see as some of the most popular things is the Spark-based implementation of LightGBM. And so it's really our Spark-based library. And so it has a lot of different functionality for Spark-based tools, machine learning scenarios. And so it definitely get, take a look, try it out. And there's a lot of fun kind of things that you can do with Synapse ML. And it's also open source. Yeah, it's also open source. So a lot of the kind of capabilities as you're accessing them in Fabric, you can also access it locally on your machine as well. Now, is it a time for the demo to see hyperparameters tuning in action? Yeah, let's take a look. Awesome. Now, let's take a look at how you can tune your hyperparameters and your machine learning models in Fabric. First, let's take a look at our data. So first, we'll start by loading our data. And so in this tutorial, we'll be using the Scikit-Learn California Housing Dataset. This contains information about the housing values across various districts. Here, we'll load our data into a Spark data frame and quickly display it to see a quick visual of what our data looks like. Now, let's get ready to train our model. We'll split out our data into a training and test data set. And we'll then set up our MLflow experiment to track all of the different results. Here, our MLflow experiment will allow us to track all the different iterations that are attempted by our tuning trial. In this tutorial, we'll be working with the SynapseML Light GVM model. In the cell, what I have is a training function, which takes in the alpha value, the learning rate, the number of leads, and the number of iterations, all different parameters that we can use to tune our SnapSML Light GVM regressor model. This function also takes in our training and test data sets. So as you can see, this training function will create a Light GVM regressor by passing in the corresponding hyperparameters, fit the model to our training data set, and then generate the predictions and final evaluation metrics, in which case here we'll be looking at the R squared value. So now let's take a look at our baseline model. This model contains a designated set of hyperparameters that we'll be using to compare some of our tuning results against. And so here I'm passing in some arbitrary parameters. We'll be logging our R squared value. And once the training's complete, we can start looking at some of the corresponding metrics. And so here we can see that by randomly kind of estimating some of these parameters, we'll get an R squared value of about 51%. So not great, but obviously an opportunity for us to tune and better improve some of the results of this. So now let's tune this model. We'll first define a tuning function. This function takes a dictionary of configs and then passes this back to our training function that we saw earlier. It also returns our evaluation metric, which we can then use to select our best hyperparameters. 
we'll also define a search space. And so this defines all of the different parameters that we want to explore and the range of values that we can take a look at. You can learn more about the different configs and how you can set up your search space through the FLAML docs here. Finally, we'll define our hyperparameter trial. This sets all the different settings that we want to use when we're actually executing our hyperparameter trial. And so here I could set things like the budget, the metric, the mode that I want to run this hyperparameter trial in. And so here I want to maximize the R squared value. And using some of the inline exploration tools that we have, we can investigate all of the different metrics and parameters that were used for each of the different trials that were attempted. And so here I can see that I was able to increase my R squared value up to 81% using the following set of configurations. I can also explore all the other configurations that were used. We can also use the FLAML visualization module in Fabric to compare and visualize our results. Here I can create a parallel coordinates plot, which allows me to see the set of parameters that would yield improved results in my hyperparameter trial. Now, finally, I want to compare the results on my final test data set. So what I'll do is I'll train the model on the final set of configs that were generated from the tuning trial. Here, what we can see is that on our test data set, our initial model our baseline model here returned an R squared value of about 51%. Our final FLAML model that went through the tuning process was able to achieve an R squared value of about 81%. So here we can see significant improvements in our tuning process. Once we've completed our hyperparameter trial, we'll now save the final tuned model as a machine learning model in Fabric. This will allow the model to be versioned and tracked seamlessly throughout the Fabric lifecycle. Thanks for the demo. So something super complicated has been solved in just a single feature, like hyperparameters tuning. Now I would love to ask, what's the stage for that functionality? Is it GA ready? Yeah, so it's currently available in public preview. And so um, you should be able to access it on any of your runtimes using Spark 3.4 and above. So we'd love to hear your feedback through the ideas channel. You know, let us know if there's missing features, things you want to see support for. We'd love to hear and really improve some of the preview before our GA release. Awesome. Misha, thanks a lot for joining. And those who are watching us, please uh, remember to leave a comment to hit the like button. And I'm looking for my like icon. Yes, hit the like button if you like that episode. Share it with your colleagues, coworkers who are maybe using and working on data science solution and can discover the capabilities that are coming out of the box of Microsoft Fabric. So until the next time, happy tuning hyperparameters for your ML models without an effort. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks so. all.